Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like to welcome all of you worshiping here this morning. Uh, it'd be so kind to fill out the communication card in front of you, put your name on it, circle if you're communing with us, and put it beside you in the pew so it'll be picked up afterwards. That'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, just to let you know some announcements to give you. Uh, obviously, this week is VBS, and I'd like to have Patricia come up and say something about that, please. Good morning. Um, I just want to remind everybody, this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday coming up is our Vacation Bible School from 6 to 8 p.m. It is for entering kindergarten through entering fifth grade. So we do have quite a few that have already pre-registered. If you know anybody that's in that age grade that would like to come and join us, please have them go to our TLC Sealy website and register, or they can come the night of and register with us. Um, a couple of things about VBS this year, this is a food truck party theme, so every night we will have a food truck that is going to be present from the, um, from the city that we will support. Um, you may have seen in the last couple of weeks, we've had little flyers in the bulletins for you guys. So the congregation is going, or the church is going to pay for the snacks at the food trucks for any of our volunteers that are helping with VBS, as well as those that are attending VBS. We do still want to encourage each of you, if you have the time and the ability to come out and support our food trucks, we would love for you guys to do that, just to give them some extra income from our congregation to help out with their um, food truck. Um, if there's any questions you have, I'll be at the back of the church afterwards. If not, we'll, we'd love to have all of you and your grandkids and stuff come with us next week. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. I have a few more announcements, announcements before we begin our worship this morning. Uh, first of all, Circle of Friends is next Wednesday, June the 7th. Okay, This Wednesday is May 31st. Next Wednesday is June the 7th. It is Circle of Friends, the last one of the school year, I believe. So it'll be June the 7th at 1215. Please sign up in the Narthex if you have not done so already. Also, um, I just lost my train of thought here. Uh, ladies' Aid meeting that was scheduled for this Thursday has been moved to the following Thursday on June the 8th. Just to let you know that coming up. And new member luncheon is Sunday, June the 25th after worship. It's been moved a number of times, but it's been the 25th because that is the day we're going to celebrate all of our new members that we have in our congregation for the past year. Uh, July Blood Drive is Sunday, July the 9th from 11 to 2. If you have not done so already, please sign up online or call Maggie in the church office. That's coming up very, very quickly because that's in July. That's the second week of July. And also just let you all know that uh, if you have not, I mean, this is the last Wednesday. May 31st is our last Bible study Wednesday at 10 o'clock. And we're finally finishing the book of Revelation this Wednesday. So please come and join that. And just want to let you know that's our be our last Wednesday for the year until we start back up in September. With that being said, we begin our worship with our opening hymn. Please rise. Him 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. O Spirit of God, we confess that we have dishonored your holy word through our lives of disobedience. By what we do and what we fail to do, we have not allowed your message of truth to rule in us. Forgive us, faithful God. By your grace, draw us to the cross of Jesus. Through faith in his promises, enable us to receive the restoring mercy that you alone can give. Amen. In Christ Jesus. You and I receive the fullness of who we are called to be through the Spirit who has been given to us, united with Christ through our baptism. The Spirit who claims us as the Father's own now delivers to us the message of His mercy. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, commissioned by the Spirit, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. 
Grant to us the same spirits that we may joyfully receive the message of Christ who has come for us all. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm, what heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter. Stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on the cross. As Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. Here in the ground his body lay, light of the world. By darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me. I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me, from life's first cry. Breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ. I'll stand. The Old Testament reading today is from Numbers chapter 11, verses 24 through 30. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the Spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, 
that the Lord would put his spirit on them, and Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading today is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost arrived, arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthias and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the ports of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall, see, shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they will prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Spirit, light divine, shine upon this heart of mine. Chase the shades of night away, turn the darkness into day. Let me see my Savior's face, let me all his beauties trace. Show those glorious truths to me, which are only known to Thee. Holy Spirit, power divine, cleanse this guilty heart of mine. In Thy mercy pity me, from sin's bondage set me free. Holy Spirit, joy divine, cheer this saddened heart of mine. Yield a sacred, settled peace, let it grow and still increase. Holy Spirit, all divine, dwell within this heart of mine. Cast down every idle throne, reign supreme and reign alone. Let us rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. 
Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite all the children for a special message for them. Good morning, guys. Uh, today, we celebrate Pentecost. You know what that means? Of course you don't, because most people don't, okay? Pentecost is the day where all of Jesus' followers were together in one place, and God's Spirit came down and rested upon all of them. And they all started speaking in tongues, and they all started doing great things. They prophesied, and they spread the gospel. They were actually given the ability to believe in Jesus because the Spirit was given to them. Okay? So that's Pentecost. And we have different readings on Pentecost. The one reading was the Pentecost reading from Acts 2. But the one before that was when Moses had the 70 elders of the people of Israel gathered around or circled the tent. Did you hear what it said? It said that Moses spoke to God, and God took some of the spirit from Moses and then gave it to the 70 elders. Okay, so does that mean that Moses then had 50% of the spirit or 25% of the spirit that he used to have? You're, you're shaking your head no. And you'd be right. Let me, let me illustrate something for you, okay? What do I have here but a box of candles, right? And if I light one candle, hopefully it stays lit. If I light one candle, see it's lit. Now tell me, if I light another candle from that candle, does the flame go down? Does this flame go down? No, it doesn't. It stays, it stays the same. And if I would light a third candle, does that flame go down? No, it stays the same, right? Before I burn the church down, let me blow those out, okay? Now, think about that. When it comes to God's spirit, is there a matter of dividing it out and God loses some spirit? No, God's spirit is God's spirit, right? It's an infinite, right? It goes on and on and on. It's not a matter of dividing God's spirit among people, and that way God doesn't have any spirit left. 
God always has his spirit, and he gives it to all of us. And you know what? We should always ask God to grant us his spirit for guidance and also to remind us who we are as baptized children of God, right? Because you are one who has been baptized into Jesus' death and resurrection, and because he forgives you all your sins, you now walk with Jesus each and every day, and God's spirit is in you, right? That means you are God's child. So regardless of whatever happens to you on the face of this earth, you are always claimed as God's child, right? And you have everlasting life in Jesus. And that's something to be happy about. That's something to be proud about. That's something to be joyful about because we're God's. And nothing ever will separate us from death. Nothing will ever separate us from God. We will always be His. Hey, let's all fold our hands. I want you to pray with me, okay? Repeat after me. Dear God, we thank you for your spirit. Because of you, we understand that we are your children, forgiven of our sins, and set free to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm not going to have you grab a candle, but you can grab one thing out of the treasure box, okay? One thing and go. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The basis of our meditation this morning comes to us from Numbers chapter 11, the Old Testament reading which was read earlier. We listen again to these select verses. And Moses went out and spoke to the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered the 70 elders of the people and stood them around the tent. And the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took from the spirit which was upon him and gave to the 70 elders. And the spirit, when it rested upon them, they prophesied, but never again. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So, how are you doing on your Christmas shopping? You heard me right, Christmas shopping, because you have, now count it, counting today, you have 211 days left until Christmas Eve. You know, that's the day that most people think that's the gift-giving day, that we give gifts to each other. 211 days away, remind you, 
And you're thinking to yourself, Christmas? You've got to be kidding me. I still have birthdays to buy, to, to buy presents for. I have graduations to buy presents for. I have anniversaries to pray, buy presents for. I have weddings to buy presents for. The list goes on and on. And Christmas is farthest from our minds. So maybe I should ask you the question this morning. What about your Pentecost gift giving and gift receiving list? You're probably thinking to yourself also, Pastor, I think you've gone nuts. Right? But think about it. Today is Pentecost. It is a great celebration in the church that oftentimes is lost. We celebrate Christmas, we celebrate Easter, and then 40 years later, when it comes time for Pentecost, the time that we should be celebrating God's gift of His Spirit to His people, well, that's just something that really isn't spoken about, nor is it celebrated much at all either. But today is the day we celebrate God's gift of His Spirit. And we hear in the Old Testament reading how Moses had the God's Spirit upon him and how God took from that Spirit to the 70 elders. But notice what happened. In those 70 elders, there were two that were not around the tent. Medad and Eldad were in the camp. And they also received the Spirit. And when it was found out they were prophesying in the camp, a boy came and told Moses about it. And Joshua was upset. Stop them, Lord. It sounds quite familiar to us, doesn't it? We're given gifts at certain times for certain occasions. And many times what we do about those gifts, but we complain about them. Even though it's purely a gift that's been given to us, we complain about it. And the more useful of a gift, oftentimes the more complaints we have about it. Because you and I are sinful people and we love to complain because we don't see the point for us personally. We love to complain. I heard a story once about a man who was touring the country of Mexico. Of course, this has been years ago. And as he was touring Mexico, he came across a section of Mexico where there were hot springs and cold springs all in the same location. And as he was on this tour with the tour guide, they noticed that the women of the village would actually come out and wash their clothes. They would boil them and wash them in the hot springs and then rinse them off in the cold springs. And one man in the tour group said, man, this is amazing. These women must be so thankful for the gift that the earth has provided for them, hot water and cold water at the same time. And the tour guide looked at him and said, not really. They just complain that the earth does not supply soap. (laughs) Sounds familiar, doesn't it? God grants us great gifts. He grants us his spirit. He grants us the ability to have everlasting life. And what many times we do about it? But we want to complain. We want to mumble. Notice in our story what takes place even before the Spirit is given to the 70 elders. God rescues the people of Israel from slavery, from hardcore labor in Egypt. He sends them to the Red Sea where the Egyptian army is drowned and you think there'd be praise and glorification of God. You think there'd be exaltation. You think there'd be thanksgiving and gratefulness in their hearts. And so there was for a time. But as they wandered through the wilderness, that thankfulness turned into complaining, turned into grumbling. You had brought us out here to die where we could be still in Egypt around the pots of food. Notice once again, the gifts that God gives to his people, what do the people do? But the same thing you and I oftentimes do, we want and we do complain about them. We grumble about it as if we could do better. Even though we complain, even though we grumble about the gifts that God has given to us, Notice what God still does for us. He still gives us his spirit. 
He still grants us forgiveness of our sins through Jesus' death and resurrection. He still blesses us with everlasting life. Even though we like to complain about things, he still grants us forgiveness of those complaints and says, you are still my child. You were baptized into my son's death and resurrection. And as he died for the forgiveness of your sins and rose again to give you everlasting life, so you and I have been claimed by God. And he grants us his spirit to dwell within each and every one of us. So we have God's spirit within us. So let us not complain and grumble. Let us live our lives with gratitude, with thankfulness. Let us understand who we are as forgiven people and always turn to him for forgiveness and repentance. Let us honestly take a look, a deep good look at ourselves as sinful human beings and turn to God for his forgiveness that he may grant us everlasting life. It was a hot summer day and the mother was trying to get a dinner ready for some guests that she had invited, invited over. Her air conditioner was not working. It was on the fritz. And it was just a hot, hot mess. But she wanted the people to come over anyway. They came over, and she had fans going. It was fairly pleasant in the, in the room. When it was time to eat, the mother looked to her young son and said, I would like you to say grace for our meal today. I would like you to say the meal prayer for our meal today. And the little boy said, well, Mom, I really don't know what to say. And she said, well, why don't you just say what I would say? And so the little boy started his prayer. Oh, Lord, why in the world did I invite these people over on a hot day like this? <laughs> Doesn't that sound familiar? We love to complain. We love to grumble. It's almost second nature to us. But God's first nature is forgiveness through his son, Jesus. And we have confidence in this because the spirit, his spirit, dwells within us who grants us everlasting life. In Jesus' name. Let us rise for prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Confident in Christ our Savior and in the promised intercession of the Holy Spirit, let us lift up our hearts and voices in prayer to our Father above. Faithful Lord, your mercies are new every morning. Even when we stray from your presence through disobedience to your commands, you reconcile and restore us through the spirit of the message, who is Christ himself, our hope of glory. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in us the fire of your love. Redeeming Savior, you prepare a, ta a place for us in your Father's kingdom and promise to all who trust in you the inheritance of life forever in your presence. 
Help us with our hearts to believe and with our mouths to confess your saving name. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Sanctifying Spirit, you fill the lives of all who trust in Jesus. Grant restoration and peace to those who are broken in heart and mind, body and soul. Grant that each one of us find refreshment in your presence. Open our eyes to the needs of our neighbors, for in them we see you, and in serving them we give our service to you. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in us the fire of your love. Sovereign King, you are Lord of all things in heaven and on earth. Watch over the community, the state, and the nation in which we live, guiding all public servants to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you as their God. We ask you to bless Zach as he serves on the southern border. Enable us to dwell in security and peace, giving witness to the message of Christ with boldness and gentleness, so that those who have yet to receive you as their Savior may be brought to saving faith. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in us the fire of your love. Great Physician, you give healing to those who cry to you for mercy. Today we lift up before you those who are suffering and struggling from cancer and cancer treatments. Those with lymphoma, Brenda, Carolyn, Lisa, and James. Those with lung cancer, Stephanie, Kathleen, and Patsy. Those close to us who are dealing with brain cancer, Robert, Kelly, Dylan, and Lindley Joe. Be also with Darlene, Shirley, and Trish as they struggle with breast cancer. Bennett with leukemia, Wayne and Matt with liver cancer, Alan with pancreatic cancer, Gloria with bladder cancer, Rob and Sherry with bone cancer. Bless also with healing, Shannon, Lewis, Josh, Johnny, Howard, Gary, Janet, Carol, and Doyle. Bless also Eva, Mac, Kim, David, Sylvia, Cindy, and Nell. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Great physician, you are the one who heals, and you give to those who cry out to you for mercy, your mercy. Today we also lift before you those who are suffering from health issues, those recovering from surgery, Tori, Tracy, Bradley, Becky, Betty, Loretta, Elrose, Donna, Susie, and Lisa. Those with health issues, we pray for Joyce, Dale, Kim, Megan, Chris, Mary, Dolores, Sandra, and Greg. Bless those recovering from a stroke, Vernell, Jennifer, Anita, Caitlin, and Ron. Be with Margie with a broken leg and Shawnee with a liver disease. Bless those with severe health issues, Johnny, Mark, Gloria, Ella, Marianne, Ruby, Ophelia, Bob, Paulette, Sarah, Ashley, and Kimbra. Whatever issues we may be facing, help us to look to you and remember that in Christ alone we receive the fullness of who we are called to be. Come, Holy Spirit, that fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Blessed Lord, we ask for your guidance and comfort to be upon our shut-ins. Joyce, George, and Carrie, come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Receiving the fullness of your spirit and offering these prayers to you, O gracious Lord, we trust that you hear and answer us according to your good and gracious will. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. I now exhort you in Christ that you give attention to his testimony and true faith. And above all, take to heart the words with which he presents to us his body and blood for our forgiveness. That you take note of and give thanks for the boundless love that he showed us when he saved us from the wrath of God, sin, death, and hell by his blood. And that you then externally receive the bread and the wine that is his body and blood as a guarantee and as a pledge. Let us then in his name, according to his command and with his own words, administer and receive the testament. Taught by our Lord, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper when he given thanks. He gave to them saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is new testament my blood, which is shed for your permission of all your sins. This do as of you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated. Welcome to the altar of the Lord. Take and eat. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Brooklyn, the Lord bless and keep his grace and peace forever. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. The royal diadem and crown him Lord. Welcome to the altar of the Lord. Take and eat. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and eat. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and eat. The body of Jesus, given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Go now in the peace of the Lord. Amen. Welcome to the altar of the Lord. Take and eat. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and eat. The body of Jesus given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Carson, the Lord, bless and keep you in his grace and peace forever. For Jesus loves you always. Amen. Isaac, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is your way, your truth, and your life. Love you, take care of you. Amen. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Go now in the peace of the Lord. Amen. Welcome to the altar of the Lord. Take and eat the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Go now in the peace of the Lord. Thank you. 
Now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you, keep you steadfast in the true faith to life everlasting, and the peace of the Lord be with you all always. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, gracious Father, that you refreshed us this salutary gift. Seal us with your Holy Spirit, that the message we have here received may be our guide as we go forth in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look with his favor and give you peace.